So I wanted to just update you uh, tonight. Spring season is when a lot of uh, assessment hits in the school district, both state assessment and then uh, some, other, some other forms of assessment that we do. So I wanted to update you on these are the assessments we'll look at tonight. Uh, grade level assessments we usually refer to as the MAP test, end of course assessments uh, referred to as EOC, the ASVAB, the ACT, and the ACCESS, which I'll explain on the slide to their own, and then advanced placement <coughs> testing uh, at the high school. So uh, first of all, the, the most typical type of assessment that people are aware of are the grade level assessments that we refer to as the MAP test. Uh, they are given to all students in grades three through eight in ELA and mathematics and the ELA and mathematics test we are in year two of those assessments coming online so last year was the first year that we took this particular form of assessment so ELA and math will be year two uh, the science test is new this year so students in grades five and eight are where science is given uh, and we have not seen that test before so we are anxious to see how that is going to be assessed the new Missouri learning standards in science are quite rigorous uh, and are often uh, activity-based, so how they're going to be assessed, uh, we will learn a lot in this first year, so year one. So just some information, these tests are written to the Missouri Learning Standards, which we adopted two years ago. It took uh, a year to develop the test, uh, so we are now rolling those out, and you'll see here at the high school level, we've got more new tests coming on the way. Uh, all of these tests are given online, so down through third grade uh, all the way through. It's given on uh, computers in the district. Uh, that allows them to do some enhanced technology item types. So uh, I know the achievement tests I took in school were all multiple choice. Uh, that grew into some writing that got graded, but now we're dragging and dropping, sorting things, uh, drawing lines, moving things around. So it, it does allow for different types of uh, assessment questions. Uh, and all of the students in the district take the MAP test. There is also the MAP A, which is the alternate assessment, uh, which is given to those students with IEPs who have the most severe learning disabilities. So that is a very small percent. Less than 1% of our students are on the MAP A. But the combination of the grade level assessment and MAP A will hit all students in grades three through eight. Then at the high school level, grades nine through 12, we give end of course assessments. Uh, often referred to as EOCs, uh, required assessment in each core content area. So in math, we are required to either give Algebra 1, we are required to give Algebra 1, or if students take Algebra 1 prior to entering high school, then they're required to take the Algebra 2 assessment. So they have to take one of those two. And again, that's a math test, so that's in year two. Uh, we took, the, took it for the first time last year. In English, sophomores take the English 2 assessment. In science, uh, biology. This is year one, as I mentioned, for new science tests. So this is the first year that we'll give the new biology assessment. Uh, the biology assessment has always been one of our greatest strengths of the EOC test at the high school level. So it's really, again, it will be a learning year for us to see how this new assessment aligns with what we're teaching and how we need to adjust. In social studies, the required test is US government. Uh, this is a field test year for social studies. So all the students will take it it will count for them. Uh, we, are, we are held responsible for testing all students in each of the four areas before they graduate, so it will count, but we will receive no scores on the government test. This is a practice test year to allow them to build the operational test, which will be given next year. Uh, this is also an online assessment platform. Uh, I meant to say go back to the grade level test. The, the map window coming up, uh, we test in late April, early May. Uh, so we push it off. End of course assessments we give a little bit sooner. We will be more mid to late April. Uh, as you'll see, we have to balance out a lot of assessments and we, we need to get through end of course assessments so that we can then start rolling into the advanced placement exams after that. So all this timing has to work out just a little bit. Uh, preparation for our students uh, and our district overall. So there's a lot of work that goes into giving these tests. Uh, there will be almost 7,000 tests will be given by the time you add everything up, all the different sessions that are given and everything else. So identifying devices and needs within the buildings, building a schedule so that we have everyone scheduled into a spot, making sure that our network can handle the number of students that will be hitting it at once with online assessments, uh, spacing those out so that that works. It's a lot of teacher training that goes into it. So, 
These are standardized assessment. They come with uh, a lot of accountability on us to make sure that we do everything correctly in the testing environment. So all teachers that give the test go through training on security and proper practices when giving the test. And it's also important for all the teachers to get to be familiar with the testing platform because then they will then train the students. Uh, when I put student practice, what I'm referring to there is student practice in the platform. We have practice assessments that aren't so much focused on content of the test, but on the tools of the test to be able to drag and drop, draw a graph, construct a line, do all of those things. We don't want the assessment to be assessing their ability to use the tools. Uh, we want the assessment to be about their knowledge of the content. So we try to do a lot of things to familiarize students with the testing platform prior to being on them. Uh, communication. The, the tests, I've said this many, many times, the tests are important, but they're not everything to us. So in working with our teachers and principals, we want to make sure that there is no communication that goes out that makes these high stakes tests for kids. Uh, we do not want kids overstressed taking these assessments. Okay, so what we ask is that they come in, relax. All we ask is that they give an honest, give their best honest effort. How they do is how they do. Okay, they're well prepared. Uh, we want teachers to build the confidence in them that they've been preparing for this all year. This is not a single event. This is their ability to show all that they've learned the entire year. But having said that, we know some students will get stressed about this. It's a whole different environment. As I said, it's a standardized testing environment. So when you start setting those things up and reading from a script, it feels different in a classroom. Okay? But over and over, we want to communicate to our students Okay, don't stress, do your best, okay, over and over again. So, uh, parent, I talked about student practice in, in a letter that I prepared and given out to each of the buildings to send home to the grade level students. There is a link to public practice tests that parents can get on. If they want, if you want to get on and see what the MAP test looks like that your students will be participating in, in the letter there is a link that you can get on and take a few questions in all the subject areas and grade levels and just get an idea of what the MAP test looks like. Okay? So that, that is all out there in public. Okay? So beyond those tests, which are the ones we typically talk about here in front of you uh, for APR and state assessments, we do have some other assessments that go on during the school year, some at different times. First, the ASVAB test, which is the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery Test. Uh, that's given to all RHS sophomores in the fall. Uh, gives an idea about interest inventories and, and possible future occupations. Uh, the ACT, I do want to mention this here. A few years ago, if you'll remember, the state of Missouri provided an ACT for all juniors in the state. In fact, not only provided, it was a required test for all juniors in the state. Funding ran out for that and it was dropped. So since that time, for the past two years, we have not given an ACT. We have built into the budget for next year a district-funded ACT opportunity for all juniors uh, at RHS. It's not a required test, so we're not going to make everyone take it. If you don't want to take it, you don't have to. But any junior that's interested in taking the ACT next year, we will have an ACT day at the high school that will be a testing site during the school day, and we will pay for one test for every RHS student that would like one. That's if you approve that, approve it in the budget, is, is built into the budget for next year. We anticipate the yearly cost of that would run around $10,000, uh, plus or minus probably 1000 or so, depending on how many kids sign up. We think that's a great opportunity, gives kids a chance to get that ACT score, some who might not otherwise do so, uh, and we just think it will be a great practice for us. Access test. The access test is for our e English language learners, ELL students. Each year, all of our ELL students take this assessment to measure their acquisition of English language skills. They are tested in four areas, speaking, listening, reading, and writing, uh, four separate online assessments. Uh, just for your knowledge, we have 154 students who are ELL students in the district who take the access test. Of those 154, 102 of them are at the elementary level. 
So by far, that is where our largest percentage is. Part of that's due to students passing the test and getting out. And part of it is also that a lot of the uh, professors at the university who come or doing graduate work have young students uh, finish their graduate work and then return to their home country. And it seems to be more of an elementary age uh, family when that happens. So uh, we wrapped ELL testing up through February and early March, and we should get scores back here at any time. Mr. Hanson, what qualifies a student to be ELL? I'm, I don't know. Sure. So ELL, when students enroll in our school district, there are questions on our enrollment form asking if English is their primary language or okay. if there are other languages spoken in the home. If it's indicated that there are, uh, then we can give that student an uh, ELL assessment and determine if they need ELL services, uh, if they qualify for the program. Okay. So uh, most of our, as you can imagine, most of our ELL students are tied to the university in some way. And then finally, advanced placement testing. So uh, when we look at all at the advanced placement courses that we offer at Rolla High School, each of those come with advanced placement testing, where kids that have the opportunity uh, to earn scores for scholarships or college credit. Uh, we fit those in right at the end of the year, right after end of course assessments. So uh, between the combination of end of course and advanced placement testing, there can be a lot of, a lot of assessment going on for students this time of year. So. Uh, we try to manage it all and, again, give them confidence and let them know that they're prepared to do well and, and simply do their best. So that's a lot fairly quickly there on all the assessments that some have taken place and some are getting ready to hit in a big way here. Uh, each building sets their own schedule, uh, testing schedule. So parents out there should receive correspondence from your home building about your students' uh, MAP testing schedule and some tips to help them prepare and do well. So I'd be happy to take any questions about any of the assessments in the district if you have them there. Those um, parent kind of sample question, the site, is that going to be in that information that comes home from their building? It or? is. It's in, okay. inf in the information letter that comes home uh, from the building. You can also, it's not the easiest thing to find, but on the DESE website are additional resources that can point you there. Uh, or call the building or contact me, and I'd be happy to get you the letter so that you can look at it. It's pretty interesting to see. It's definitely not filling in the bubbles anymore. Yeah. It's definitely not filling in the bubbles. Yeah. No. Craig, the uh, the other testing they do throughout the year, that's the, what, what is that called again? It's so the, the local testing that we do is called the NWEA yeah. assessment. Was, that was new this year? That or? was new this year. Uh, that It's new. It replaced testing that we've always done. In the past several years, we've done quarterly common assessments in all subject areas given up each quarter. The NWEA replaced that, so we no longer do the quarterly come assessments. We do the NWEA three times a year to measure student growth throughout the school year. And that's gone pretty well this year? So far, it has gone well. We've given it twice. We do have one last window coming up at the end of the year after all of this testing to wrap up our local assessment. So uh, I think we will need a full year's worth of results and looking at it to determine uh, how much it helped us and what we can identify from it. Greg, what? Platforms, computer platforms are used for this testing. So we are completely on either Chromebooks or desktops. Um, we have iPads in the district, but they're not the they're not super assessment friendly. But the Chromebooks work well. Uh, most of the assessments also come with listening components. Uh, so we have earbuds or headphones available. We encourage students to bring their own. A lot of students have their own earbuds, so we ask them to bring their own. And if not, we have some. Uh, available to you. So, uh, but we'll be doing a lot of it with wireless connections, which at times, and we have been, uh, in the early days, we really worried about the load, the ability to handle uh, that much data. But everything, they changed some of their uh, technology to make it work more seamlessly, and that's our hope, that we, we want a quiet, seamless operation on the technology side. We want it to be about how the kids do. Anything else for Mr. Hanson? Thank you. 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 Thank you.